Hello and welcome back. Today we are discussing episode 11 of the Dicely campaign. I can't do it with my hands anymore. We got a nice temp location going on today. I don't know how to light this. I don't know how this sounds. We're gonna figure it out. <laughs> Welcome to my childhood bedroom. You will not be getting a tour. But let's talk Dicely. Okay, so we're leaving Grassfire, we're not going to Balesville, we're going to Valenbridge, we're gonna go to the library. So the party sets off. We start traveling northward so we can catch back up to the path that's gonna lead us up to Valenbridge. We meet up with the path, we continue on our way, and then Denny points out a ranch that we see in the distance. It's a large building, there's smoke coming out from the chimneys. And the group is very split originally about if we should go visit this ranch or not. Elowin is getting a little tired of these detours and would really rather continue on the main quest line. I want to go to Valenbridge. I want to learn about these druids. I want to do some research about infernals now. We don't need to go off the beaten path and get captured by cannibals again. And at first we're winning the group over with this argument. Me and Drac are kind of saying that we don't need to do this. We're doing totally fine on our own. We don't need to go investigate this place. But eventually he realizes that this might be a good place to get some information about his brother. And so then I've lost my only ally who didn't want to go visit the place with me. And the group decides to go and investigate the ranch. And in a stunning turn of events, it does turn out to be okay. The ranch turns out to be owned by DNR Solutions. It's a merchant guild that Gideon does work with occasionally. So it's a familiar name. We go in and sell some of our stuff, buy some new things, ask some questions. They've never heard of these bugs that we've been seeing around, but they do say that they've seen a dragonborn that looks like Drac. And Drac is a metallic dragonborn, so he's a fairly rare sight to see. So someone saying that they've seen someone like Drac, it's probably his brother, which is exciting because this is who Drac is out here looking for, except for they tell him that Drac's brother was heading east which is the opposite direction that we are traveling. And also giant. There's a lot east. So just knowing that he's going east doesn't really give us much to go on. But we know he's alive. And DNR Solutions gives us the name of the faction that he was traveling with and a location that that faction normally hangs out. So while we still don't really know where his brother is, we at least have a lead now that we can go talk to some people and see at least what it is that he's doing. And the place that they were talking about is pretty close to Valenbridge. So we can still continue the way we're going and kind of help satisfy some of Drax's needs as well. So we leave and we travel not too far away and set up camp for the night. But during the night, we are visited once again by those sneaky little bugs. And we now have something in our minds that is telling us that the bugs are especially interested in the Starborn, Asimar's tieflings Argonfolk. So now that we're watching for the bugs reacting to Starborn in particular, it's actually kind of clear that they do start to surround Abe. And it also reminds us about last time when we were fighting the bugs in the cave and the bugs picked up Abe's body and tried to take him somewhere. So it seems like it's these bugs that are capturing Starborn on the road and taking them who knows where. So we fight these bugs off again. It's not a hard fight. Another thing we learned during this fight though is because it starts to rain, this is the first time we fought them outdoors. And as it rains, the rain seems to deteriorate their outer shell. It maybe seems to make them weaker. I'm not sure it hurts them necessarily, but it seems to just kind of make them weaker. Like I said, we fight the bugs off pretty easily. We did some nature checks. These ones in particular seem to be young. But without knowing what their lifespan is like, it's hard to say how long they have existed in the world and how far they can travel, how quick they can travel. We really don't know anything about where these things are coming from. But the bugs are something that Renan told us about when we were learning about the druid stuff originally. And they're also tied to Abe somehow because they're looking for the starborn. And will Layla talk to me about the bugs as well? I'm making connections right now. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to that conversation I had with Waylayla last time. Because I've, I'm all of a sudden starting to think that the Malden Abe stuff is connected into this druid stuff somehow through these bugs. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. We do collect a couple of these bugs' bodies, and we have plans while we're in Valenbridge to try to show them around to some of the bounty hunters there and see if they recognize them at all. So the next morning, the party continues on, and eventually we do make our way to Valenbridge. We're doing it, guys. We're travelers. We get to Valenbridge, and there's this whole long queue outside of the city. And it seems like they've recently increased the toll to get into the city, and people are struggling to make that payment now. When we ask the guards about it, they say that they're trying to keep people out because there's been an increase in crime recently in the city. 
Nell, because she's a sweetheart, goes around and gives people money so that they can get in. Drac tries to help some of the sick on the road. Nell comes up with this plan that if we can help reduce the crime in the city, then the toll can be lowered and these people can be allowed to enter. Which is nice, I guess. Elowen, again, doesn't really think that this is our problem, but we'll go along with what Nell thinks. So we pay our toll, get into the city, and we go seek out the guard captain. Honestly, I don't think she wants our help. And like, fair enough, because we are just some random people who walked in off the street and we're like, hey, do you have jobs for us? And she's like, who are you? The party spends a lot of time trying to convince her that we are worth hiring. I don't know why. We're in the city. We can do what we came here to do. But this party is just generally quite morally good. And I guess they just want to help the people who are stuck outside. The episode ends with the crew just kind of evaluating Valenbridge. It's very grand, big buildings, shaped topiary, clean paven streets. It's a lot, especially for people like Nell and Drac who don't frequent big cities. But it's something new and different and you don't see it very often in this region of the world. And the party is excited to get some lunch in some big restaurants maybe do some shopping, and of course, finally, hit up that library! Certainly going to happen next episode, we're in Valenbridge, you can't stop us now. So that's where we're gonna end it today. The next episode of Play Dice League will be going out on the 25th of September. It's gonna be a pre-recorded session because some of the cast members can't make it, but those who can will be hanging out in chat while it's playing, so it's actually a really fun way to interact with the cast because we can actually pay attention to chat instead of playing the game. There is also a new episode of the Play Dicely After Party up on the Dicely D&D YouTube channel where we discuss the fallings out of this last episode as a group. Those are super fun to record and a great way to kind of get to know the cast a little bit better outside of the game as well. Other than that, that's all I got for you this time. I hope you stay happy, stay kind, and always play Dicely. Bye! This is so uncomfortable. <laughs>